rise as we welcome the light of Christ and join us in hymn 572, Pass It On. It only takes a spark to get a fire going. And soon all those around can warm up to its glowing. That's how it is with God's love. Once you've experienced it, you spread His love to everyone. You want to pass it on. What a wondrous time is spring when all the trees are budding. The birds begin to sing, the flowers start their blooming. Christians by our love. You know, this morning, this was so weird as I left home. You know, we're singing the song, Pass It On, and it's like we're talking about what a wondrous time is spring. Oh, and we've got fall and winter to face yet. You know, I'm thinking, oh boy, that probably wasn't a very good thought. But you know what? I bet you I had over a hundred robins in my yard this morning. And I thought, oh, that's a good sign of spring. Forget fall and winter. I'm going to spring. <laughs> so if you'll sing with us, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Isn't that the truth? Kind of a fun little rhythm. We are one in the spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one. Father, from whom all things 
ourselves this morning, Lord, worshiping you and praising you. Please, as we go out this week, let us show everyone that you'll know that we are Christians by our love, by what we say, by what we do, by how we treat others. Lord Jesus, come into our hearts now this morning, Lord, and fill us with your love, with your joy, with your peace. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning and happy Halloween. It's good to see everybody here. I'd like to review the mission statement for our church. It's on the front of your bulletin if you want to follow along. Calvary's mission is to reach out, disciple, and nurture people in Christ through worship, education, fellowship, and service. To be not only an inviting church, but to go out where people are and to invite them. And now let's uh, look at the announcements. We do have some important ones. The, if you look on the third page of, the, of your bulletin, you will see what's going on this week at our church. And on the back, you can see some things that I want to um, and review. Well, on Sunday, uh, there's a, next Sunday that will be, there's a, going to be a representative from SHIP and if you are a senior citizen, I would highly recommend that. It helped me to make some decisions for insurance. And uh, so I would encourage you to attend that or make use of it. Um, then a very important thing is next week, we have uh, the start of going back to regular time. So daylight savings time will end on Saturday night. We don't want you to miss out on church. And then also next Sunday, we have our 73rd anniversary Sunday uh, during our service. And we also will recognize those people who have passed away this past year. And that will be in recognition for All Saints Day, which is actually tomorrow. Um, the Family Ministries is going to meet in the Fellowship Hall after the church service. So, I've asked to, been asked to remind you of that. And now the missions has an announcement. Good morning. Um, I wanted to just thank everyone on behalf of missions and we were able to put together 56 school kits and 20 personal dignity kits. And those will be going to Mount Pleasant next weekend for the in-gathering. And also wanted to remind you that this is the last Sunday that you can put in for the blanket Sunday. Um, so if you still want to give for the blankets, you can still do that today, $10. Just make your check out, you know, to the church and put on the comment line um, for blankets. So thank you very much for all your efforts to get us all the things we needed to make that happen. There are no other announcements, then let's uh, refer to your bulletin for the call to worship. I praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob. Whose hope is in the Lord their God. Who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them. Who be safe forever. Now, if you will also join me with the opening prayer. Beloved companion, you deal with us kindly in steadfast love, lifting up those bent low with care and sustaining the weak and oppressed. Release us from our anxious fears that we, holding fast to your commandments, may honor you with all that we are and all that we have. Amen. In the scripture reading, I encourage you to look in the Pew Bible so that you can follow along. It is on page 178. I'll be reading Deuteronomy 6, verses 1 through 9. 
These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess, so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord your God as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands that I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. Hear, O Israel, and be careful to obey so that it will go well with you and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your fathers, promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them to you on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your homes and on your gates. And I want to ask you to stand for the reading of the gospel. That can be found in your pew Bible on page 983. I'll be reading Mark 12, 28 through 34. This is the greatest commandment. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, and with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. The word of God for the people of God. God. You may be seated. Good morning, and might I say it is so good to have these bells back. Oh my goodness sakes, I didn't realize how much I missed them. Hi dear little Wesley, how are you Tootsie? Are you going to be a bell ringer someday? Yeah, yeah. Wesley's heart. Um, we would like to dedicate our number this morning, um, I love to tell the story, to Carol Coe down in Florida. So everybody wave at the camera and say, hi, Carol Coe, we miss you. We'll see you in the spring. And we know that she is one that loved to tell the story, didn't we? Every time you was around Carol, you could feel the spirit of God and his presence within her life. So we miss her. But I want to introduce you to our bell ringers. I bet half of you don't know who half of these people are up here maybe, huh? <laughs> Tracy Olderog, Jean Johnson, Patricia Terrace, Tammy, Mc oh look, she's got a, her own bell solo, Tammy McCleary, and Holly Price, who is new to us this year. And we have Sandy Bramstead, Hannah Fox, we have Phyllis Art, Juliet Gilliland, and Keith Krebs. So I am so blessed to be surrounded by such talented and wonderful people. Boy, did they teach me a thing or two. <laughs> so. Listen up this morning, and I know that your heart will be blessed by their music.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. It is indeed a gift to worship together. Uh, and what beautiful worship it is that we get to share. We have a couple prayer requests and joys um, that I have to share with you. This is a note from Carol Snay. She asked me to share. Um, to my beloved church family, thank you for your prayers, loving thoughts, cards, kindness. I am in a mode of recovery in my home. God and Lord Jesus have blessed me in many ways during this challenging time. I look forward to worshiping with you in God's beautiful house of worship. So a heartfelt thanks from Carol Snay. Um, and then Janet Postian has a couple prayer requests here. She's asking for prayers for her grandson Nathan and his parents for safe travels on their journey on Tuesday to St. Louis, Missouri. Nathan will be having a surgery there called SDR done on his back that will enable him to sit and walk better. She's asking for prayers for a successful surgery and a speedy recovery and for the vision that God put in her dreams of Nathan by the age of 15, being able to walk without the use of any equipment to become a reality. Janet is also asking for prayers for the John Deere workers that are on strike, as well as for the family of one worker that lost his life this past week that was hit by a car while walking across the street to help his fellow workers in the picket line. Pray for the company to present a contract that will not only be fair for the company, but also fair for the workers. So those are the prayer requests I have before me um, and the praises. So is there anything else that we're missing that we need to be praying for that maybe we haven't shared yet? Okay. Um, I also, before I forget, I have a couple little announcements, and they will fit into prayer requests as well. Um, the ad board has decided to re, uh, recreate the evangelism committee. And so on November 9th at 6 p.m., we're going to have our first evangelism committee meeting. All are welcome. If you have any ideas or hearts about uh, reaching those in our community, please share. Please come. We'd love your ideas. We'd love your heart um, and your thoughts. Our, another piece of this is that our offerings have gone down. Um, in, in the last, I don't know how long, but they've gone down. Um, and we're also looking at utility bills doubling, and so there's some reality here of finances that we're looking at as well as um, and primarily wanting to disciple uh, those in our community as we ha are the only church in town. So how can we do that best? So we want your heart, we want your ideas. If you can't be there on November 9th at 6 p.m., um, but you have ideas and you want to share those with me, come to me or, or anyone else that you know of on the ad board that might be able to help, all right? Because we would love to hear your ideas. In addition, next week, um, the Iowa WCA is putting on some different events in, or the same event in several locations, um, and they're called Here to Their Events. There's one at Wesley UMC in Muscatine. Um, from 3 to 5 p.m., and I just invite you to come if you want to hear more about what's going on um, with the Global Methodist Church, the WCA, Wesleyan Covenant Association, or if you have no idea what I'm talking about, um, come talk to me and we'll, we'll share that with you as well. So um, that is an opportunity uh, before us as well, and we want the Lord to work in all those ways because we can't do anything without him, so we're going to ask him to walk with us in that as well. All right. Well, I invite you to find a posture of prayer that is comfortable for you. Um, let us go to the Lord. Most gracious God, you are good. Oh, you are so good. And your love is beyond anything we can comprehend. Lord, you have created the heavens and the earth. You put, uh, you separated light from darkness. You put animals and plants on this earth. Water. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for creating us as humankind. We thank you for drawing us together in community. And we thank you for being a God that lives on the throne and yet lives and reigns in a way that listens to us. Lord, you are a God that is just and righteous and whole. 
Lord, you are good. You are our healer. You are our redeemer. You are our sustainer. You are our friend. And Lord, you lead us in a perfect, perfect way. So God, we ask that you would hear our prayers today as we know that you are listening. We pray that you would open our minds, open our hearts, open our spirits to receive whatever it is that you want to plant within us today. As we come before you to worship you, to honor you, and to remember and call you good. Lord, we thank you for Carol. We thank you for her um, heartfelt thanks to her loving church family as she continues to recover at home. Lord, we ask that you would bless her. Lord, we thank you um, for her heart and her spirit and her spirit of gratitude. And we ask, Lord, that you would continue to bring your healing touch to her. Lord, we thank you for Janet. We thank you for her grandson, Nathan, and, and his parents. And we ask in the mighty name of Jesus that you would bring them safe travel to St. Louis this week. Lord, we ask that you would um, guide them in every step they take, every decision that is to be made. We thank you for the doctors and the care team that are going to oversee this surgery called SDR. We ask that you would help it um, to help him recover. Lord, that he would have speedy recovery. Lord, we ask that you would enable him to walk without the use of anything, any equipment. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we know that you have healed many. So we ask for healing touch upon Nathan. Lord, we ask um, for the John Deere workers as well. Lord, we pray for your grace and your love. We pray that a contract would be made that would be... Um, right for both John Deere and the workers. We pray, Lord, for the family of the one who lost his life this past week. We ask that you would comfort them as they grieve. Lord, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus that you would hold each worker, each family, each person that is affected by this. Lord, we ask in your loving, uh, loving heart that you would care for those who are grieving. Lord, we know there is other grief. We know there is other illness. We pray um, for our friend Bonnie. We pray for um, many of our friends, Lord, that are hurting and in need of recovery. We ask for your healing touch to come upon mind and body and spirit. We ask in your mighty name that you would care for each one just as there is need. Lord, there are many that grieve the loss of a loved one or a job or an activity or a connection that was once there. Lord, we ask that you would be very present and that in the, in the loss of that, that your hope would come through. Lord, we pray for our church community. We pray for our community of, of Walcott and surrounding community of Durant and Bluegrass and Buffalo and Davenport. Lord, we ask that you would help us to extend our loving hands of grace. Show us the way of your perfect love in this community. Lord, reveal to us how it is that we are to spread your love and invite many. Teach us, Lord, what it is we need, what it is we need to do that may be different. Guide us, Lord Jesus. And for the United Methodist Church, both local and global, we pray that you would have your hand upon each decision that is made, that we would follow you. Lord, that we would learn all that we need to learn and that we would receive your discernment and wisdom and the path to follow. We pray over this event in Muscatine and, and surrounding um, throughout Iowa. We pray that you would have your hand of wisdom upon each, each person. Lord, our hearts are in this space full of joy and gratitude and grief and sorrow and confusion and uncertainty. And there are so many different thoughts and feelings, and we bring them all to you. So today, we're going to come to you quietly. 
silently, to pray as we have need, to listen to what you have for us, and to offer to you what is deep in our hearts and heavy on our minds. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing us, for speaking, for guiding, for offering your perfect wisdom and your perfect plan. Lord, it is amazing how you hear and speak to so many all at the same time. You are outside of our comprehension, and you are oh so good. And so now, Lord, we come to you praying the prayer that you have taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I invite our ushers forward for this morning's offering. The loose change and dollar bill offering goes to the Pregnancy Resource Center this week. So um, anything that you put in here that is loose change or dollar bills will go to that. And remember uh, Diane's announcement, the $10 for blankets um, for missions. And praise the Lord.
Please join us. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the gifts that you give us of time and talent and possessions. We thank you that you invite us into the journey alongside of you as we seek to bring your kingdom here on earth. So Lord, we ask that you would bless these gifts that we have given back to you. The things that were first yours that you gave to us, we give them to you. And we ask for your perfect blessing as we seek to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Please remain standing and join me in the Apostles' Creed, uh, found on page 881 of your hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful gift it is to be able to recite the Apostles' Creed. It is what we believe. What a beautiful gift. Oh, how skillful grows the hand that obeyeth love's command. It is the heart and not the brain that to the highest doth attain. And he who follows love's behest far exceedeth all the rest. This is Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. I'm going to read it one more time. There's a little bit of old English in there. So if you had a hard time following, I'm going to try it one more time. Oh, how skillful grows the hand that obeyeth love's command. It is the heart and not the brain that to the highest doth attain. And he who follows love's behest far exceedeth all the rest. So our scripture today is one that many of us have heard before. The scribe comes to Jesus and asks him the question, what is the greatest command? to love the Lord your God with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your might and all of your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself. I'm not sure if you've heard that before, but God calls us to love him first and then to love our neighbor. It seems pretty simple. He says that, all throughout the scriptures, and the, especially in the New Testament, Paul talks about, and Jesus does too, everything, all the commandments are wrapped up in these. If you love the Lord, and if you love your neighbor, you're doing pretty good. Love is a little harder than it seems sometimes. Love's a choice. Love's action. It's not just words. Love is movement not just quiet. So how are we doing at loving our neighbor? How are we doing at loving the Lord with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our mind and all of our strength? 
one of the things that intrigued me about this passage as I read through it this week was the, um, the way that the scribe and Jesus talked to each other. The scribe was really testing Jesus. You know, he'd heard an answer that he really liked, and so he thought he'd ask him this one. What's the greatest command? And then he liked the answer that Jesus gave, and he said, you're right. Can you imagine telling Jesus you're right? It kind of made me chuckle. It's like, that's a good answer. And he refers to him as teacher, right? He's not referring to him as Lord or Savior. He's referring to him as teacher. Now, scribe, when we hear that word, we, I think, I guess I can't say what you think, but, you know, just by the word scribe, I think someone that writes, right? So maybe a secretary, maybe someone that um, is, is taking notes. But the scribe was well-learned. Um, he was one of the, oh, the rulers, one of the people that would judge whether um, people were following the laws and, and what was really written and what it really meant. These were highly educated people, right? It wasn't someone just taking notes for someone else had this, their own learning. And so he was really wanting to understand. And, and then as, as the scribe answers and repeats Jesus' answer, Jesus says, hey, you got it right. They're both kind of complimenting each other. You, you got it right. You got it right. The scribe's like, you're pretty close to the kingdom. Well, I'm sorry, Jesus says that to the scribe. That's pretty cool. Wouldn't that be really nice to hear from Jesus? You got it right. You're pretty close. You're so close. Love the Lord your God. So the, the scripture reading that Marcy read this morning was Deuteronomy. It was um, the, the Shema. I've talked about that before. The Shema is the Jewish understanding of, of that law. Love the Lord your God and, and post it everywhere and write it on your forehead and make sure your kids know it. This is the most important thing to love. It's the most important thing. How we do it? How we do it? Um, in Ruth, Ruth, there's this. Ruth is a story um, about a woman that sticks with another. So Naomi is Ruth's mother-in-law, and Naomi loses her husband, and um, she stays with her sons. And ten years later, she loses both of her sons. So now it's it's a mother-in-law and two daughters-in-law. And Naomi says, go, go home. I have nothing for you. In the Jewish tradition, they would then marry um, the next oldest. So the, the daughter-in-laws, if they lost their husband, would marry a brother. The brother would be in charge of marrying them. But they had two brothers they'd lost. There are no children left. So Naomi, in chapter 1 of Ruth chapter 1, talks about how you should just go home. I don't have any more kids for you. I can't, I can't marry you off. I can't take care of you. Um, it's not just to marry, but to be associated with a man was, was the way that you had any value in society. It was the way that um, in that time that you were cared for. So she couldn't care for them. So the one daughter-in-law goes away, as she's told, although she, it's very difficult, she does so. But Ruth says, no, I'm going to stick with you. I'm going to stay. I'm not going anywhere. She's going to love Naomi with all she has, even though Naomi has nothing left to give her. They are connected in a way that she says, I am going to walk with you. I am going to care for you the best I possibly can. And Naomi takes care of Ruth, and the story unfolds. But isn't that beautiful? There is, there's no means of provision that is clear. There's no clear path. She says, I got you. I'm going to walk right with you. Your God will be my God. That's what she says. Your God will be my God. Do we know that Lord? Do we know that God that loves us with everything he has? We opened this morning. One of the songs was, I love to tell the story. Oh, no, that was these guys. They'll know we are Christians by our love. That was the one that I was going to refer to. They'll know we are Christians by our love. Love is patient. 
Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not self-seeking. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects. It always hopes. It always perseveres. Love is patient. I don't know how many of you are patient. Patience is hard. Love is kind. Oh, I don't know. All right, right now it's hard sometimes when we disagree. Love does not envy. Don't you ever want something that somebody else has? It does not boast. It's not proud. Love is not rude. It's kind. It is not self-seeking. It's not about me when we make decisions. Love is about the other. Sometimes it's one other. Sometimes it's two. Sometimes it's a family. Sometimes it's a congregation. Sometimes it's a community. Love is not self-seeking. Love doesn't keep a record of wrongs. Have you ever had an argument with someone? You're like, well, but you did that. But I did this, but you did that. There's no list to go back to, (laughs) to say, well, you faulted me in this way, so I can fault you in this way. No, two wrongs don't make a right. Keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil. Sometimes we don't see the evil, (laughs) but it's there. But rejoices in the truth. So I don't know if you hear a pattern, but love is work. It's choices. It's decisions. It's words. It's actions. How are we doing? I fall short. I fall short a lot. It's hard. Hmm. But you know what? We have this amazing God. I don't know if you know that symbol up there, that cross. Jesus came to this world for you and for me. He died on that cross to take care of all those mistakes and to help set us right so we wouldn't make them again, so maybe one day we'd break the chain and stop making them. God puts us on that path, and he walks right beside us. Jesus, before he left, before he left earth and went back to heaven to hang out with God some more, to sit at the right hand, to keep living so he could hear our prayers and intercede for us, He sent the Holy Spirit that's present with us. If we love, then God's love is in us. We invite the Holy Spirit. He'll walk with us. He cares for us. I am so grateful for that love. So will we love the Lord with all of our heart and soul and mind and strength? With everything within us. Every cell, every thought, every action. Will we choose him first? And then will we love our neighbors? Will we love them? Better today than we did yesterday, better tomorrow than we do today. He's a good God. And he will walk with us as we do that. God first loved us. And that's why we can love one another. And that's why we can worship our King and our Savior, and our Lord. And that's how and why we can love one another. Will we love to tell the story? Will we do it? By our actions, by our words? Will we love to tell people, hey, I go to Calvary. I have this beautiful community. And we work really hard to love each other. 
sometimes we fall short, but we really do. When we talk about the Lord and what he's done for each of us. I've heard some of your stories. They're pretty amazing about how God's showed up in your life, how he's healed you, how he's offered visions and dreams and how he's prompted you to pray for someone or call someone or write a note to someone. That's pretty cool. Keep doing it, church. Keep doing it. Let's do it today better than yesterday. Let's keep telling the story. If we love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and if we love our neighbor as ourselves, then we're fulfilling the command that Jesus gave us. Isn't that beautiful? Would you pray with me? God, you are good. And we confess that we fall short sometimes. And we ask for your forgiveness and your grace and your love to cover us. We ask that you would straighten us out where our paths have gone crooked. And we ask, Lord, that you would teach us how to love you well, how to worship you with all of our hearts and all of our soul and all of our strength. Teach us how to love one another with everything within us and guide us in each decision we make. Offer us your perfect wisdom, your perfect discernment, your perfect strength. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you'd like to stand for our final uh, song this morning, it should be the prayer of each and every one of us to um, make me a channel of your peace, Lord Jesus. So join us. sing along with us this morning and I'm sorry (laughs) but just pray this week that the Lord would make you a channel of his peace it seems that in this world today we need so much more peace than what we have had before and I pray God's richest peace in your soul and in your life this week as you go forth Thank you so much, Acolytes. You do a fantastic job of taking that light of Christ out. 
Pastor Joy? Amen to that. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Go in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. Amen.